Welcome everyone. My name is Brett Huisong and I'm a landscape architect and project manager with Parks and Recreation. This is a presentation that will introduce you to the Point Douglas Regional Trail Master Plan. We'll provide a brief project overview that includes the project extents, available funding, and the purpose of the plan. We'll then jump into the purpose of the meeting, which is an evaluation of the opportunities and constraints along the existing corridor, and we'll also explain an online interactive map to allow you to provide specific feedback. Finally, at the end of the presentation, we'll discuss the next steps and the tentative project timeline. To begin, this is the first of two online presentations for the Point Douglas Regional Trail Master Plan. Parks and Recreation is restarting the community engagement process, which was postponed in March because of the COVID-19 pandemic. During the restart, we are planning to use a variety of engagement methods that adhere to current public health guidelines. Formats can include a future open house, pop-up meetings, interactive maps, and virtual presentations similar to this. Due to the ongoing pandemic, we do not anticipate holding a formal meeting. Simultaneously, Parks and Recreation is holding virtual design advisory team meetings that include a variety of government and municipal stakeholders advocacy groups, residents, Ward 7, and the Southeast Community Organization. The comments from both the community and design advisory will be used to develop a future trail alignment. Next, we'll talk about the project background. The Point Douglas Regional Trail Corridor was identified in the 2040 Regional Parks Policy Plan as a regional trail search corridor that would ultimately create a trail from St. Paul, which is shown here, all the way to, to Hastings, which is further off, off the map. As an implementing agency, the City of St. Paul was encouraged by the Met Council to prepare a master plan for the corridor in order to become eligible for regional park system funding for acquisition and implementation. As a result, this project is funded through the Parks and Trails Legacy Fund Grant Program. The four and a half mile corridor is located in the southeast region of the city of St. Paul running along Highway 61. This is showing Burns, downtown St. Paul, and the southeast map of the city of St. Paul. The purpose of the project is to develop a master plan for a continuous off-street regional trail for people of all ages and abilities. Now that you have a little background about the project, let's jump into the purpose of the presentation, which is to receive virtual feedback about the opportunities and constraints of the existing Point Douglas corridor. Ultimately, this feedback will help develop a future off-street trail alignment. In order to help analyze the corridor, I've separated the corridor into five segments. So you'll see this is um, the current extents of the project and this is a blow up of the existing conditions. And these are separated into five segments which reflect different on street or off street existing conditions through the corridor. The following slides are enlargements of each segment that describe preliminary opportunities and constraints identified by the Design Advisory Committee and initial responses from the community. On the enlargement maps, you'll see a corridor identified with blue lines. You'll notice the previous, there's a variety of blue lines for segment one um, and they have different shades. And you'll notice the red lines are identified by existing bikeways. The opportunities identified in segment one is the existing fish hatchery trail, which is number one. And this is scheduled to be reconstructed in 2022 and 2023. Funding still needs to be approved, but um, this is a benefit that an existing trail is going to be built and there is funding to um, enhance it. Second, there's an existing underpass, which is at the Battle Creek Trailhead. Third, future connection to the trail from the Gold Line Bus Rapid Transit. So the Gold Line is following to the north um, along 94, and they would 
plan to have a spur trail that would come down and connect where number three is located. Some of the constraints are item number four, there's slope and erosion issues that have been fixed, um, but there are still some others that I think need to be completed. There's also unknown future Warner Road intersection improvements located here at 5 at Warner Road and Highway 61. MnDOT does have a plan in the future to um, identify some of the intersections that are medium to high priorities um, to fix the intersections, meaning it could be a grade separated um, interchange. So this is something that could affect a future trail if it would ever go along Highway 61. Other constraints are vehicle noises along 61, limited directional and wayfinding signs, and also um, number eight, fish hatchery trail is not a direct route to the Indian Mountains pedestrian bridge. It would actually be shorter and you would not have to go uphill if you could go directly to the pedestrian bridge. Segment number two, opportunities and constraints. Um, number one, we've heard consider relocating the trailhead to Lower Afton to help manage um, access, snow removal, um, winter access, maintenance, and there's also help to manage dumping and trash that accumulates along the entrance road, um, which is item number five. The opportunity along this segment is the roadway is wide enough at over 43 feet to allow for an off-street trail, as well as two vehicle drive lanes. Um, fourth, the entrance road is in disrepair and allowing for an off-street trail to be built um, anytime in the future. Uh, if we end up moving the, uh, the curb one way or another, it won't affect um, the road because it, it needs to be replaced at, at some point soon. Um, a constraint, we talked about the access, maintenance, and dumping. One constraint is the intersection here, number seven, at Lower Afton, which um, needs to be enhanced to allow movements between um, bicycles and pedestrians and vehicles safely. <clears throat> and finally, there are limited directional and wayfinding signs along this segment as well. Segment number three, opportunities and constraints. Once again, the road is in disrepair. Um, number three, um, we've identified that this roadway is scheduled to be rebuilt in 2026 according to MnDOT's plans. There currently are no plans or funding allocated to it at this time. Um, one other opportunity is there is available right-of-way between Point Douglas and Highway 61, mainly in these areas here and generally um, along, along this section here from Howard to the north. Some of the constraints, there is a pinch point identified right here at number six. Most likely a wall would need to be installed. Here's a blow up of number six and what that looks like with the ditch or a swale in between the road and Highway 61. Other constraints are the residential homes, driveways, and mailboxes um, identified uh, with number four and the garages are all on the east side or most most of them and that becomes difficult because of conflicts between vehicles turning um, the user space for private residents and um, bicycles or pedestrians walking. Another constraint is the limited snow storage, which is identified here as you get down closer towards Highwood. Um, Highway 61 and Point Douglas come together and they are separated by a Jersey barrier, so snow removal or storage is going to be difficult in this area. Also, in this image, there is a private residence where land acquisition would most likely be needed in order to fit a trail in between um, Highway 61 and the roadway itself. Segment four opportunities is the, this is currently an existing off-street trail, so it's already um, created and built for multi-use. And so this goes from Highwood all the way down um, south of Ogden and it jumps back out onto a cul-de-sac on Point Douglas. Other constraints here similar to what we saw in segment three, limited snow storage, um, limited directional and wayfinding signs basically throughout the corridor and the vehicle noise because you're directly against Highway 61. 
And finally, the last segment, segment five, um, which is starting at the cul-de-sac, going through Carver, and then down to Bailey Road at Washington County. Opportunities, there is an adequate road width, um, basically north of Stenchfield, where curb to curb you could get um, a bike lane and two vehicles, or sorry, not a bike lane, but a multi-use path and two vehicle lanes safely. Um, opportunities is to connect to Washington County for a future Point Douglas Trail. Constraints is similar to Lower Afton, where it may have some safety concerns with um, pedestrians and cyclists crossing. Um, once again, the homes, driveways, mailboxes are all on the east side, and they can create um, uh, concern between vehicles and pedestrians. There's also limited roadway south of Stenchfield where we would have to look at uh, moving the curb or possibly some type of retaining wall because there is a slope um, or a, a drainage um, identified with number seven uh, along the west side of, of Point Douglas. So now that we've analyzed the existing conditions corridor, we're relying on comments from you as the corridor experts. We've created the following interactive map that can be used on your phone or personal computer at home. When you log on through the website, shown here below at the bottom, you'll see a page similar to what is on the screen. You'll notice the corridor is again separated into five different segments, starting at the north, segment one, down to segment five um, at the south. You'll also notice that there is a legend on the left side. By clicking this second button, the legend will pop out and it will show you similar colors with uh, the proposed corridor in blue and existing bikeways or trails in, in red. On the right, there's also four icons to provide the type of comments either as a general comment, a concern, an idea, or this works well. At any time, you can zoom in or out of the map depending upon the level of detail you'd like to see. So once you've chosen your comment, it'll take you to the next step <clears throat> where you can submit a report or you can also see what other people have said by clicking the name or the comment listed below. And then you'll, you'll be able to, to see what they have said and the location that they've, that they've pinpointed. So once you want to look at or submit um, your comment, you can click on the map and identify the area that you want to pinpoint and submit a report. So once you do that, you'll get to a, another prompt and it will ask you to um, be sure to check your location, add your name, your email, and write your comment. Now listing your name and, e and email is optional and you don't have to to do that, but it is a, a way for for you to get on the mailing list if you would provide your email. Finally, if you have another comment, whether it's a feedback or you want to do a different one, I have a concern, you basically can go back and um, by clicking the home button right here and you repeat step one and you can click on a comment icon and you will go through the process once again. So your comments can be related to any opportunities and constraints along the corridor, such as missing trail connections, needed signage, any perceived safety concerns, pinch points, and even trail alignment recommendations, such as if you prefer the trail alignment on the east or west side of the road. Once again, this feedback will be used to develop a preliminary trail alignment for review in future phases. So the next step is to continue public engagement by seeking input from focus groups and by conducting pop-up meetings at local events. We'll also be developing the trail alignment based upon the comments we, we received. And finally, below is a tentative schedule for major milestones and online meetings. You'll notice each phase there is an opportunity to provide feedback, and you'll see that in italics. In addition, we'll take the project to Parks and Recreation Commission and Transportation Committee for review in November and then for approval sometime after the first of the year. Ultimately, 
we hope to review receive city council and met council approval sometime in spring 2021 below is my contact information and the website for the project and interactive map thank you for listening